It's week 14 in the NFL, and the Chiefs are looking to stay on their streak against the Baltimore Ravens. I got their game plan coming for you right here. Well, the last quarter of the season is set to start off, and honestly, the Chiefs need to buckle down and do a little bit of this against this coming team. We're going to start on a couple of points, but really just want to take a second before we get started on all that and all the individual pieces to take a look at what this team really needs to do this week. Uh, and that's because last week just has to be thrown out. Uh, not a good game all the way around, a uh, lot of distraction with the Kareem Hunt saga that went on, and uh, we've heard more about it this week. I'm not going to spend any more time talking about Kareem Hunt. But it is important to realize that that was a monkey wrench that was thrown in late to the week and really has an, uh, an effect that's hard to overcome in just a day or two, especially when the game plan's already in, you've already given all the practice reps that you can give, uh, and it's kind of making it up as you go along in that situation, especially in the backfield. But that's no excuse for the defense, and the defense has a tall order this week. They're going to have to buckle down and do some good things. So they have to find a way to get together and regroup. Uh, made a couple of signings. They got uh, Sharkandrick West back in the fold. It looks like at least initially, he's on the depth chart at number four. So you're going to see, again, a lot of Spencer Ware and a lot of Damian Williams. Uh, you're going to see some Daryl Williams, I hope. And then hopefully uh, West will get a little bit of relief. It all depends on the game flow and how things go is who gets on the field. But that said, uh, slow day for Tyreek Hill last week. I think that changes this week. And we'll see what Travis Kelsey can, can do to continue. Uh, early in the week, everybody practiced. So that means Sammy Watkins might be available as well. And so all these things play into not necessarily um, specific spots to attack, but a little bit more generality depending on who the personnel is at any given time. But again, that's all trying to bring it all back together and get focused again. New guys uh, in the starting backfield, uh, guys you know, but not in that same role. Got to get more focused and be paying more attention, do better film work. Uh, the Chiefs rewarded Austin Raider with a, a contract extension uh, because of his play while Mitch Morse was out. Morse, Morse came back uh, and did a good job this last week. I uh, expect him to play again, but it's good to have another interior lineman that you can use as your swing guy in there. Uh, we'll still see about the return of LDT. I don't expect it this week. And obviously, we're going to hang on and wait for news about Eric Berry. Uh, going to be cagey with this one. I don't think the Chiefs are going to announce anything till late. And given that there's a short week the following week, I think it's going to be very interesting to see just exactly what they do. Now, for this game, the keys to it are pretty simple, but there's something that has to be really addressed. And number one, Patrick Mahomes has to get back on a roll. I thought he had probably his worst performance in terms of consistency last week, even though, again, that was almost 300 yards and four touchdowns. Uh, it's amazing how jaded we've become, uh, me in particular. Uh, but he has to settle down. This is a team that is going to be able to keep the ball from him in a large part. We'll see how the defense can combat that. But being able to, to keep the ball, the time of possession, means that Patrick has to be more efficient when he does have the ball. He's not going to have as many snaps overall, is my guess. And so these overthrows and underthrows and things that we saw last week are going to have to be remedied. And a lot of that comes back to he's, he's got to get his platform back. Uh, I think he did a good job on some of the deeper throws, knowing that he had to have that base. But just too much ad-lib on some throws that I think if, if he had slowed down a little bit, set his feet a little bit more, some of these uh, accuracy issues from last week would have been taken care of. We're going to see how he can respond. And it's going to be very important because everything flows through him. I expect for him to, to buckle down. And, and I realize that Kafka and Rita are going to be on him about some of that. Uh, and, they're, and they're all kind of rolling with the flow as last week was kind of one that you just toss out. Number two. On the defensive side of the ball, you got to look at the opposite direction. And uh, this quarterback, Lamar Jackson, is kind of unique. Uh, the Chiefs are going to have to do something to spy him or something to keep him contained. And, and that may be uh, a different front. We'll talk about that in a minute. But uh, going to see some Dorian O'Daniel that I think, whether it's in the base or the nickel or whatever scheme they come out with, I think he's going to play a key role. He's the only guy that has a chance to chase down Lamar Jackson once he gets... 
uh, a full head of steam. And I don't even know that he's very well equipped to do it either. So it's very important that you keep him in the pocket. And that means that only rush him from the outside. You don't want him to flush. Because when you look at what Jackson does with the ball in his hand, especially from the pocket, but just in general, you see that he is a, a short to intermediate passer. Hits a lot of, of crossing rounds, especially to uh, Andrews, their tight end. A guy that last week ran predominantly drags and it worked out for him. Uh, you don't see him going super long. So I think even though they have a burner in John Brown and they have uh, Crabtree that's you know been up and down in his contest with the Chiefs over the years, uh, guys that can still get downfield, I don't think that you have the quarterback that has both the patience and the experience to get it to them. So I think that plays into the Chiefs' defensive hands, and it allows them, uh, their corners, to be a little more physical uh, and concentrate on that early part of the down, uh, knowing that he's probably going to flush and try to run rather than he is to really force the ball downfield. Number three, as far as the skill players and the running game, you want to vary it up some. Saw a nice pitch last week, and if you missed that in the film room video from a couple days ago, uh, I really like that play. It sets up really nicely. Go to have a look at that, and you'll see what I mean. Uh, they need to be a little creative. I want to see them mix and really get this committee thing going so they can get an idea of how they can use each back down the stretch. As they get into these last four games, there's a couple of running teams that are going to run at them. They need to hold the ball some as well. And so being able to vary your attack, whether it's the, the RPOs, or running a little bit more downhill, I think that can always help them in maintaining and taking some of that pressure off of Mahomes. Not that he feels it at all. Um, but look for uh, Chris Conley, hopefully to still get some reps, and whether Sammy Watkins is back. You might see a whole lot of wrinkles, and there's one thing that goes into this offense, and it's really the balance and having athletes at all the different positions. And when some are out, it definitely has an effect on the team as a whole and the offense as a whole and particularly what Mahomes likes to do. You see him force some throws into Kelsey last week, although Kelsey had a great game. Uh, you don't really want to see him pre-read like that. So let's see if he can get the, over that, and they can kind of spread the ball out, use the run game to a little more effect. And for on defense, this is a run team. They're equipped for it, they're good at it, and they can hit you with a couple of different guys. Gus Edwards, first and foremost. You can see over his last couple of games how much success he's had running inside. And that's really, I think, what's turned the tide for these Baltimore Ravens is, is concentrating on not trying to hit the corners, but trying to stay inside what they do, tackle to tackle. And for the Chiefs, there are definitely ways around it. When you look at playing the nickel, especially with Dorian O'Daniel, you see some, some drawbacks. Uh, obviously, Anthony Hitchens and Reggie Ragland didn't do that great last week either. So what's the best way to protect your inside linebackers if you have a team that's running at you? Put more linemen in front of them. Linemen cover up and eat blocks. They allow themselves to protect the second-level defenders, and that's key in this ballgame. I want to see them stick in the base a lot more than they have in recent weeks, and I want to see them come out, and at least every now and then, Bob will throw a wrinkle, maybe not a blitz, although he will send the linebackers from time to time, and they've both shown that they can they can get home if they have to. Uh, Reggie had a nice hit on somebody a couple weeks ago. Uh, what I want to see them do is come out and vary their front, not only uh, with the five-man, but get in some bear. Cover that guard center guard tandem and make sure that it's tough running in there. That takes away from what they can do. Now, it does commit more defenders to the run, but in the passing game, should they play action or whatever off of that, it allows you to have guys one-on-one -on -one and not necessarily coming around the edges and leaving gaps for Jackson to escape. So I think that's important in terms of containing him on those play action uh, passes that are going to be very important for them. So I want to see a little more commitment to the front this week. It does mean leaving the corners in man and, and relying on the safeties a little bit to come in and play some man. And they have to have better communication in the secondary than they had last week. You saw a couple of plays where they were just out of sorts because they weren't on the same page. Uh, Dan Sorensen and Kendall Fuller in particular on one play it was the Cooks touchdown. That's also in the film room, so check that out if you missed it. Uh, but these things together allow you to take away, or at least have a better chance of taking away, what the Ravens do best while still protecting from what they can do at their best uh, when they ad-lib and get outside the pocket. So those are the four keys. Overall, look for this team 
really to get down this last stretch, this last quarter of the season. And they're trying to wrap things up. They want that number one seed. They have to stay diligent and they have to stay aggressive. Backing off too much, playing it safe, and he's been known to do, is a recipe for disaster for this team. You get behind and you flip that script and you have to go to New England for an AFC Championship game, that's a tough call. So let's see if they can stay focused, stay aggressive, and keep their level of play up to the point where they can secure that number one seed. I think that they can, but it does remain to be seen. So we'll see what happens. Make sure you check out the post game stream it'll be live uh it'll be that evening like normal time so if you need a little time to get there no worries uh, but i appreciate you guys watching and i'll be talking to you then so enjoy the game and i'll talk to you next time